morning. This is already the vintage stitcher. I'm so happy that you're here with me this morning. Good morning, good morning. It is Friday, May 19th. I missed you yesterday. Um, I woke up yesterday and my tummy was not having a good day. It was just a it was just, I did not feel good all day. I was kind of green, didn't know what was going on. I don't, I don't think I had the flu or anything, just not a good stomach day. So yeah, I was not looking good. I was not feeling well. So I just kind of putzed around the house and did a few things. I've been um, like getting my fabric back in from the vehicles so that I can get it organized in the house and get it organized in my workspace so that we can continue um, offering fabric to people. So I did that yesterday. I did some crafting. Um, I've got some cra cute crafting stuff to show you. I finished the last two quilts. Well, I had one finished on, I did one on Wednesday. I was gonna show you on Thursday. And then I got the last one was a small, just like a 40 by 60 small quilt. I got that one done yesterday morning. So they are all trimmed up, ready to go back to the customer. Everything's done. Um, so I just kind of laid low, had bad hair, pajamas, the whole thing. Um, so did that yesterday and then, um, how we came home, what did we have to do? We had to run some errands when he got done with the work. Oh, we ran over to Tractor Supply and, um, I've been looking for, we did some landscaping last year at the end of last year. So I wanted some big pots for in the front of the house that I can plant some trees in. I want to plant tree, like potted trees. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. We live in the woods, but potted trees in the front of the house. So I went, we went to tractor supply and got those and then, um, came home and had dinner and nothing too exciting. The night before though, we had gone out to this pizza place that I absolutely love. And I think the pizza was just didn't agree with me. I think that was the problem yesterday. So, but I got lots to show you today. <clears throat> I'm not bringing out the quilts. They're hanging up in the other room, so I'm not gonna go there with the quilts. I have lots to show you today, lots to go over with you today. So, the best way to stay up to date with what I'm doing, because um, with summer it's kinda all over the place, is to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. I'm also really active on Facebook and Instagram. I leave messages also on the community tab on YouTube, so, Lots of places to see what I am doing. The big thing that I am doing is, and, and you're gonna hear about it, if you see my Facebook and Instagram post last night, we have the deal done for the retreat in October. And I am so thrilled to announce that Kim and Jade from Small Town Needleworks are going to be our guest designer, all right? They are new, they are upcoming, they are so many, they're going to be great. They are going to be great. They are the next big thing. So if you want to meet them or if you haven't met them yet, coming to the retreat is a great way of getting to know them because um, they're going to be big. Uh, they are going to design two exclusive patterns for the retreat. One you're going to get um, when you register for the retreat or closer to the you know, closer to the retreat time. She's going to design that and it is going to be exclusively for the retreat. And then we are going to finish it in class at the retreat. We're going to do this really cool hoop finish. Um, when I seen it at this retreat, I just knew I had to have them there to teach us how to do that because it is amazing. So we're going to do that. And then they're also going to do another little surprise exclusive for us that we have no idea about. And that's going to be a total surprise. So I'm very, very excited to, um, to announce that they are going to be at the retreat. Um, a lot of my same vendors are coming back. I'm getting some new vendors. Um, so our vendor, our vendor portion of it hopefully is going to be bigger than this last time. So we're going to have it at the Pine Mountain Ski Lodge again. Um, anybody who was there knows it is a, an amazing facility. It was top notch. So what you get for the price is um, 
you get your lodging for three nights, you get three breakfasts, three dinners. Um, what we did for lunches was pretty low key. We ordered in some takeout one day. Some people went into town. Um, there's a restaurant down downstairs that is a bar restaurant. Um, good, reasonable food for lunches. So you get all of that, plus you get um, the exclusive designs the classes. I think I'm going to do a class on Friday and we're going to have Kim and Jade do the class on Saturday. I got some fun stuff signed up for us. Um, the vendor show, everything, everything. It's all inclusive. You come, you set up, you stitch. We take care of everything. Um, we didn't even have to think about bringing our own water, soda, drinks, coffee. It was all provided for us there. They had like a soda bar and they had coffee all the time and cold water and cups and everything down <laughs> to the coffee is provided for you. You come, you show up, you stitch, you relax, you have fun, you join in the games, you win prizes. It, it was amazing. Um, so the, I know it seems like <gasps> sticker shock when you look at the price, but it is all inclusive. You have to do nothing. You don't even have to get a ride from the airport to the lodge. We have it covered. They have an amazing shuttle. They come pick you up. They drop you off. It's perfect. Okay. So um, registration is going to open on Monday. And we are keeping it small. My husband and I thought about it. We thought, okay, we could do this is the maximum number we could do. But then if we bring it down to here, we get to keep it really inclusive. Jenny and I, everybody get to spend time together and get that personal touch so it is going to be small they are there are limited limited spaces okay so that is the big one and I'm sorry to ramble on about that one um, but I wanted to get that out there because you're gonna see a lot of it Monday I will have the links ready for you to um, register Monday morning 8 a.m. I will have the links they will be listed here in my description box they will be on Facebook you can email me for them, um, Instagram, however you want to get a hold of me, but they will be available. The links will be available on Monday, 8 a.m. All right, I will be ready. All right, <clears throat> the next kind of business thing I want to go over, I know we're running long in the intro, bear with me, okay, is Jade from Small Town Needleworks um, and I are doing this Christmas stitch along. This is going to be a Christmas in July stitch along. It's going to start July 1st. Um, if you have not gotten your pattern, go over to their Etsy, get the pattern. Now, um, Live and Die LA has beautiful fabrics that um, go really well with this. I ordered mine, Jade ordered hers. Um, they are offering free shipping for the month of May. All right, so if you want to get your fabric for this, they have some really pretty opalescent fabric for this um, for this pattern. The thing is, they do everything per order. So it could take about six to eight weeks. We are right at that six week mark, okay? So, Valerie knows we're ordering the fabrics for this project. She is hopefully going to join in with us and hopefully she's aware that, you know, we're kind of on a deadline with with the fabrics and get them to us in time. But if you are looking at the Live and Die LA hand dyed fabrics in the opalescence for this, get on the horn and um, order your fabric. Okay, that is also listed. Her, I think I have her... <clears throat> her um, website listed in the description below with the code for free shipping. So six weeks, six weeks and it's gonna be July. All right, um, yes, I'm gonna start gathering my stuff. I'm pretty, pretty excited for this one. Um, good thing the fabric's not here, otherwise I'd be starting it already. <laughs> that kind of keeps me in check. Okay, <clears throat> when we were at retreat, I think I had told you there was this little gal starting her business, her craft business down in the lobby. Perfect time to start. There was a, there were 35 women upstairs or 30 women upstairs that were willing to help her out. And I got the cutest, cutest birdhouse. And she's got a lovely little story about how her and her sister and her family go to Lake Superior on vacations and they collect these rocks. And that's what these are. These are rocks from Lake Superior. And then she 
makes these little crafty items and she has the she is so adorable so I talked to mom and I said you know we're I gave her a shout out but I didn't want to say her name I didn't want to you know without permission okay so <clears throat> mom gave me permission to shout out her Etsy and her name all right so if you any of you were looking at these and you want to get them they're so cute her name is, um, and it's mom's name that's on here. It's Anna's Rock Creation, Lake Superior Rock Art. And I'm gonna list all this below. Um, but this is the name. This is the name. It's Anna, and mom's name is Janice. There is her information and her Etsy shop, okay? So if you were one of them that messaged me looking for this information, here it is. And I will list it in my description below. All right. Let's go support this little girl. Um, this is her very first business. And let's make her successful. All right. So, okay. <clears throat> what did I work on? While I was uh, quilting the quilts, I did get a really cute finish done for a customer. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, this one made me think outside the box a little bit. So she's mounting it to this wood like cabinet. It looks like she gave me the dimensions. I had 14 by 14 to work within. Okay. So, and she wanted it so that she could mount it flat fold, mount it or flat finish mount it. Okay. And it's so cute. So cute. So 14 by 14 is pretty big. And then the piece was only like, uh, maybe eight by ten five by seven not very big okay so I had some thinking to do but once you start pulling fabrics and you start going and I kind of took my 14 by 14 and I worked my way down okay and then got pretty creative with that this is what I came up with so that she could mount it to her piece Look at how adorable that is. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, she had sent this fabric along with, with one of her other projects. And I saved a piece because I knew it was going to suit this. Knew it was going to suit this. And then I pulled like a cute gingham check, set it on point, add some ribbons and bows, and it's a flat finish. All right. So now if it were just me, I'd leave the back raw and just add my magnets and my washers and just call it good. I, I can't do that with a customer. I just, I just, for me, for me, I can't do it. So I finished the back off like this, covered the back. So all like the raw edges and stuff are covered. And all she has to do is she has to mount her washers and her magnets um, and position this on her mounted piece, or she could glue it on whatever she prefers. Um, but I, you know, I wouldn't want to, if I get rid of the piece of furniture, I really wouldn't want to get rid of the stitch piece. So this is the finish. I love it. And I hope she loves it too. So, all right. So I did get that done. I'm going to put that over here. I did have a chance to do some stitching. Not a ton. Um, we're busy around here. <laughs> I, I almost, um, I, I, you know, I got my deck table and chairs outside and I'm like, oh, I'm going to sit outside and, and stitch and all that good stuff. And um, I haven't really had a chance to yet. But the last couple nights I did sit down and I worked on my Prairie Schooler Village Sampler. I love this stitch. I love this. I'm having so much fun with this. Um, it's got the cool little chart. I'm going to show you this. This is my favorite thing about Prairie Schoolers is... I, my OCD, I can go through and I can check off colors. I love it. And I'm doing it on Ada. So it's easy to count and it's easy to like get some anchor pieces going and then build off of that and count and that. So my OCD is like really, really relaxed because I'm feeling the zen on this, <laughs> this project because I can go in the order that I want to go in. Um, a lot of pieces you have to build off a piece and you're constantly changing threads and you're doing a section and that's not my favorite. I do it, but it's not my favorite. So this is where I'm at with this piece. I love it. Look at how it's coming together. 
Look, I love this piece. I love being able to just move the hoop around and do the specific colors and check them off the list. And I've, I'm saving my white, my white fill in for last, my white fill in. Um, and because I know I'm gonna change the color of the fences. So there's a couple of white things that I'm kind of changing along the way that um, that I'm using the specific, I'm using different colors in. Like the colors of the flop in the center of the flowers, a lot of them were white. I didn't want that. I changed them to all pink. So I changed all the flowers to pink. Let me show you if there's a spot. Like right here. Changed all the flower centers to pink instead of white. I love this piece. I, I cannot wait for this to be finished. This I am doing on an 18 count colonial fabric. And I'm using the called for DMC, called for DMC. So that is where I'm at on this. I am just lo loving it. I got too tired. I'm working on this house <laughs> last night. And I got too tired to finish that little section. I was pooped. I was really, really pooped. So <clears throat> that is what I'm working on. I have some fun craft projects for you guys. A little bit of sewing, a little bit of craftiness. Um, so if you're not a sewer, hang on. One of them is just iron infusible web. But <clears throat> I get asked all the time because, you know, we have these fabrics in stock. And nobody buys them because they don't know what to do with them. They're these, like, border fabrics. Let me open this up. And they're beautiful. Beautiful. Let's get it going the right way. Do I have it going the right way? These are beautiful, beautiful fabrics, right? They're border fabrics. And you got like four rows. And everybody's like, what? What do I do with that? How do I incorporate that into a sewing project? You know, so we all collect this stuff. We all collect this stuff because it's so cute. It's a panel, but not quite a panel. And really everybody's like how do I do I add it to a border do I cut it in sections what do I do with it so we all just buy a yard and it languishes in our in our our fabric stash right all right so I came up with a good idea for this cute cute idea out on Pinterest it's out on the internet it's a free pattern it's called the 10 minute table runner 10 minute table runner 15 minute table runner, 20 minute table runner all depends right so what I did is I took that strip of fabric and I cut it and I made a 10 minute table runner out of it. Look at that. So what it is is, you know, yes, you have a yard of fabric. You could do it with the, I did it mine with a yard and a half of fabric or a yard and a, a yard and a quarter of fabric because I wanted it a little bit longer. Um, so it's a yard and a quarter that fabric there would get you four table runners. A yard and a quarter fabric of that would get you four table runners. I picked a coordinating fabric and away I went. So I'm going to, there you go, 10 minute table runner. How cute is that? So I couldn't stop at just one because I cut two. I, I only did two, but now I'm addicted and I want to go do more. So this one is a little bit different color fabric. Look at that one. That is the second row and it is different than the first row. There's two of this and two of the first one I showed you. Look at how cute that is. Adorbs, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm so excited about these. I just wanna stitch and I just wanna sew. I wanna sew dozens of them. So they'll probably be available on my Etsy. I'm getting to that point. I'm going to work this weekend on my Etsy shop, updating it, okay? I said I was going to do it this week, but then it got away from me. But I'm going to work on my Etsy shop. So these are going to be available in the Etsy shop, I think. But answer me this. Would you rather buy it all done or would you rather make it yourself? So should I offer them made or should I offer the fabric for sale? Or should I offer both? Okay. So then, then of course, you know, then I'm scouting. Okay, what else can I do with this 10 minute table runner, right? And I had this really cute fabric. Nobody's buying it because it's cute, but it's very, 
there's only so much you could do with it, right? Not everybody's going to make a quilt out of this. Uh, you have to hit the right person. So this is for those fun focus fabrics that, you know, just are quirky. Um, this one I made with the barbecue fabric. Look at that. Look at that. And then I did add some a giant rickrack on this one um, just to kind of break up the red dots. But how cute is that? That is so cute. This is going in my camper. This is going in my camper for on my picnic table. I think this is amazing. So, so much fun. So like I said, let me know what you like, but is a good way of using up those fun fabrics that you have that you had to have a yard of or half a yard of and you just don't know what to do with them. So go over onto Pinterest. It's a it, there's tutorials, there's free, you know, free patterns, there's dimensions, everything's out on, on Pinterest. It's all free and, you know, they show you how to do it. These are super fun. Even a non-sewer could make these. All you need is a sewing machine and an iron. Okay, so the other bolt of fabric that I've had, and I've had it for a long time, it's been in many, many of my sales, and everybody's like, what do you do with that? I don't know what to do with that. And I've had these ideas in my head. I just haven't had time to execute them. So I want to show you what the fabric is. And you're all going to go, oh my God, what, what would you do with that, right? Because it's super cute. So it's this fabric. And it has, on this side, it has like these little flags. And then it has these cute little triangle flags. And then on the back, it has these buntings. Okay, super cute. Super, super cute. Nobody knows what to do with it. So they usually sit in quilt stores, right? And then they go on clearance and then nobody still buys them. <laughs> it's, it's just a crazy, vicious cycle. All right, so here's what I did. And I'm gonna show you what I got done yesterday. I didn't get it all done. I took a yard of this fabric, all right, a yard. And I made three different things out of it, okay? The first one was with this portion here. I made these cute little plant stakes with them. Look at this. It's reversible. Or the you can hand them out to the grandkids for you know Fourth of July. They're like just cute little flags. These are not for outside. They're they're not going to survive like in your potted plants outside or whatever. They're going to get these are indoor cats. Um, but look at how cute. You could decorate. You could put a, put them in a um, like a mason jar on your table or use them in your displays or put them in your house plants um, at home. This is what you can make with them. This is as easy as... And what I did was I took that yard of fabric and I put fusible web on the whole back. This is all just fusible web, okay? Like, remember the stuff that we used to stick on our shirts all the time with the cute little thing of bobbers? Yeah, this is just fusible web. So I covered the whole yard of fabric with fusible web, cut everything out, and then this is just ironed on there. See? Just wrapped it around a dowel from Dollar Tree. I had cute little white beads, some cute ribbon. I went to the store for nothing. I had all this stuff in, in my craft room that I could use. And I made these cute little flags. You get 11 of these flags out of one yard of fabric, 11. So they're super cute. You know, you can hand them out, you could do whatever. So 11 of these, all right? Then this, the triangle part, I took, again, fusible web, fusible web, fuel, uh, fusible web and an iron and I made, let me get this in the right direction here. I made this cute bunting. Cute little, like, um, what are they called? Now I'm forgetting. Like little banner things. So this is just jute from the dollar store. I made a loop. I, and all I did was I laid the cording in between two, ironed them together ironed them together about three inches apart. So this is reversible. This is reversible. 
See? And I laid them all together. Let me get the end. And then I needed a little something in the middle. And I don't know if I'm going to add like anything else. I don't know if I'm going to like glue a bead on there or a button or something, or if I'm just going to kind of leave it primitive. And then I have my loops at the end. And then I made big kind of fluffy bows for on the end. Again, I had all this stuff in my stash, all these ribbons in my stash. If you don't have a, a star one like this, just use what you have. Use red, white, and blue ribbons. This one I wanted to be a little bit more primitive. Okay? Fusible web and an iron. All right. In the works, and I will be able to show it to you on Monday, is what I'm doing with this part. Okay? I have something exciting with this part too. So stay tuned for that. Again, I am probably going to offer these on my Etsy shop. I don't know if I'm going to sell them as like a whole set of the 11, the 11 flags, the bunting and the other bunting um, as a set made. Or if I'm going to offer the fabric, what would you like? Let me know. What would you like? I have quite a bit of this fabric. So if you want to get crafty, um, the fabric is available. Just let me know. Um, these are going to be, if I do these things for the Etsy shop, they're going to be made to order. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to make a huge inventory of it. I'm going to make them to order. So they are going to, they're not going to ship out in a day or two. There's probably going to take me a little bit of time to get things made. So um, that's kind of where I'm going with this. I'm in a very patriotic mood. I really want to sit and play with my ribbon and glue. That's what I did yesterday. I kind of putzed in there with that. And I think these things are so super cute. I would really love your opinion on these. I want your opinion. Please, please let me know. I could be way out in left field and they could be just not what people are looking for. I don't know. Okay. Giveaway time and trivia time. Oh, hang on. I got to grab. I got to grab the trivia questions. Hang on one second. Okay, I'm back. I left them over on the counter. And I kind of remembered the question I was going to ask, but not exactly. All right, so for Vintage Sampler Summer Stitch Along that we're going to do, remember I had this duplicate of this Stitching with Sudbury Sampler 3. So cute. Um, that is going to go to Kathy Riles. R-I-L-E-S, Kathy Riles. She left a cute comment. Very nice. Um, so, Kathy, email me. Let me know what your mail-in address is, and I will get this out for you. And it'll be there just in time to start Vintage Sampler Summer. All right. Which is coming up fast. i got to get my stuff kitted up. It's coming up really fast. All right. And then our daily trivia um, from Wednesday. The winner on Wednesday was Joyce Taunton. T-A-U-N-T-O-N. Joyce is an avid, avid commenter. Thank you, Joyce. You help out so much. So Joyce, your name is going to go into the drawing for the grand prize, which is coming up soon, May 31st. Yay! All right. <clears throat> so the trivia the other day was what is, a, uh, what is not recommended as a way of securing your edges on your fa fabric? It's masking tape. All right. We've all done it. There's no judgment here. There's been days when my sewing machine is buried and I want to start a project and masking tape is all I have available. And guess what? And I'm too lazy to wait for Fray Check to dry. I've used masking tape. I've used painter's tape. I've used that silver duct tape. No judgment. Um, but what I do do is I make sure that I have enough room for finishing that when it comes time for the piece to be done, I just cut that off. I don't try and t remove the tape ever. I just cut it off and then finish the project from there. Um, so, although it's not recommended, eh, there are no cross stitch police. And really, that's all we had in the 80s and 90s. I mean, that's how everybody did it that way. We all did it that way. You know, otherwise you had frayed edges all over the place. So, eh. Okay, <clears throat> here is the trivia question. This one, it, this one is harder. This is one I never heard of either. So, what count is Herta? H-E-R-T-A, Herta. I've never heard of Herta. 
<laughs> okay, I, I found that way too funny. I've never heard of the fabric Herda. Uh, what count is it? And tell me about it because I've never heard of it. And is it fun? Is it is it is it a fun fabric to stitch on? Is it enjoyable? Um, I would love to hear more about it. So that is the trivia question um, for today. I am off for the weekend. We are going to pick up my mother-in-law in Appleton tomorrow. Um, we've got some fun stuff to do with my husband. We have to go to Wisconsin and um, do a couple of things. Hopefully there's going to be a big transition here for him. Not for me, but for him. And it's very well deserved for him. So um, hopefully we'll be looking into something like that. Sunday, I'm going to spend the day getting my mother-in-law back kind of situated and comfortable um, evaluating where her pain level is, that kind of stuff. So I just know that um, I'm not going to be available on Sunday. So, But I will be back Monday morning. Monday morning. All right? So I hope everybody has an enjoyable weekend. Everybody has fun. Hope the weather is doing what you want it to be doing. Ours is not, eh, but it is summer. When you're out and about in the world, please be kind, spread love, and find yourself a tiny bit of peace.